Well, this is Richard back at you. Today I got an 89 Ford AOD tranny in here, uh, also called an FIOD tranny, uh, Ford's Overdrive, the early style. Uh, it takes a kick down linkage that has to be up to make it work. It doesn't have a modulator or anything like that. So it's just like a, a 700 tranny. Uh, this right here controls all TV pressure and line pressure. So this has to be hooked up if it's installed and not hooked up, the tranny will burn up just like a 700 wheel. So, but I wanted to clear up some stuff on the lockup stuff on these trannies here because uh, I had some uh, people ask me some questions about it. Being that an AOD is a uh, lockup style tranny, an AOD E and the 4R70W. But the AOD itself is what I consider a direct drive tranny. Uh, the th when it goes into third gear, uh, this shaft right here uh, goes all the way back into the tranny like this and splines into the third gear drum back here. So when it goes into third gear, it grabs this shaft. This shaft goes down in the torque gear like this. So once it sets down in there, this shaft will not turn unless the torque converter turns. It is locked solid. So once it goes into third gear, it is locked to the back of the motor. Now, being that it's considered a direct drive, uh, you can't push the brake pedal, turn off electric solenoid or anything like that, like the AODE or the 4R70Ws. So once it goes into third gear, it's locked to the back of the motor. The third gear clutch stays on. Your overdrive band comes on for fourth. Your forward clutch comes off. Now the FOD and AODEs and stuff like that are the only training the forward clutch comes off in overdrive. So uh, it's a really weird training. Why they did that, I don't understand it, but it does work. So I wanted to clarify that. This training does not have locked up. I consider it more of a direct drive unit. So. Nice. That's what that is. Now this training here, we believe, uh, was run low on fluid when it come into the shop. So we're going to get it apart uh, and see what it looks like. Here we do have a governor. Uh, it's just a different design than a 700 that comes in on the side. This is physically mounted to the output shaft. Uh, the FMX tranny, uh, stuff like that, has the same style governor, just a little bit different design. One thing bad about, uh, real bad about this training is uh, the first person that tears it down, uh, if he don't watch this, he can get in trouble. Let me show you something here. Get out of there. Okay. Now, when you take this governor off, there's a check ball in right here. It's right there and it keeps it, this from spinning. Well, this check ball sometimes won't come out and you don't know it didn't come out or you didn't take it out. So when you take this shaft out this direction and you beat that check ball through this case, <laughs> you just ruined that case. Believe me, I've seen it happen. I've seen uh, uh, builders learning how to build trannies do it. I've seen, I've seen it happen multiple times. So, You want to get a magnet and you want to take it out just like that. Now the AODEs, the 4 70 w stuff does not have that governor back there. Uh, there is a, a snap ring and a metal sleeve back here covering these holes. I don't have it here. It's just a sleeve that goes over. You put the snap ring back on. Okay. Uh, I do believe you got to pull the snap ring and the sleeve off to get the unit, the shaft out. So you just want to be careful when you do this. This is a totally different unit. Now let me show you something here too. We'll go in here and bore a hole, a bore a hole in the case right here, so we can get a screwdriver back here, like this, to <clears> pop <throat> the torque converter forward into the flywheel. Because these torque converters, when they go up into the flywheel, they always grab on these bolts right here. 
and they will not go forward. So people try to put a nut on here and pull it forward with one nut on here and it pulls it crooked. So you always get a screwdriver in here or drill a hole in the cage where you can get behind that torque converter and pop it to the flywheel. You have to do that to every one of them. If you don't, you're gonna have a front seal leak because it bolts up crooked to the flywheel. So. Trick to the trade. It's a trick to the trade, but let me tell you, um, a lot of this stuff I've already done it, so. Might have been 30 years ago, believe me, I've seen it done. So you can get in here and look, it's got a magnet to pan and you can see it's just trashed. We'll get in here and see what bands and clutches and stuff are gone. Uh, I believe he said it doesn't have overdrive, but I believe it did drive in, didn't it, Trent? Uh, yes, sir, it did. I think it was stopping up the filter after a while, was yeah, what he was talking. Really <clears throat> now, let me tell you, these are... <laughs> This bolt right here, if you tighten this bolt down right here too tight, this valve right here will quit moving. And you will not have fourth gear just by doing a service. I've seen it done many a times, but people will go in here and tighten this bolt too tight and it locks the fourth gear shift valve down. And now you don't have fourth gear. So you better be careful. This, this valve body right here is really critical to torque. It's all an aluminum valve body and it's all aluminum valves inside. So, you've got this gasket right here. It's thick on one end, thin on the other. You better put it back on, it'll suck air around there and cause all kinds of issues. They do make a four wheel drive filter that have a center piece here with a snout sticking out about that tall. So they do have a four wheel drive pan version two. The pan's got a nub on the bottom of it. Versus a bottom. Yeah. Now this training here, if you ever build it back, you better, it better be so clean that, uh, I mean, clean, clean. Now you see this little spring right here? You can barely see it, it's kind of a little spring, a little lever looking mm -hmm. spring. You can get it right there. Can I come loose? Yep. Well that uh, makes that weaker. When you, it needs a double spring to keep this pulled, this TV rod pulled back. When you push it forward, it needs that spring to pull it back. That way it never can get hung up. So you can just take your finger grab it and you can put it back up on that little lever like that and now you just made it twice as strong to pull back so <coughs> now these trannies too have guide bolts that align the valve <coughs> You can see them by their, what they look like. They got shanks on them right here. You can see the shank. And it's on these, these small holes right here. This one here, and this one there. That's what lines it up. You start these two down first, and you can put all your other ones, tighten these down, and then you can get, start from the middle and work your torque out like this. worked for me for about uh, seven years I believe and uh, uh, he didn't think you could put one of these trannies in without uh, pulling the valve body off. So these trannies are uh, really bad about once you overhaul them you go out and drive them they just the valve body sticks up real easy they got to be that clean and uh, he come to work for me and he couldn't believe that uh, we could put one of these in and uh, he didn't have to pull the pan. I mean he was really shocked but the main thing on these is cleanliness. Cleanliness, cleanliness. Now they do make two versions of this unit. They had an accumulator here, had a piston and a spring uh, that moved up and down that softened your fourth gear shift. Uh, and then they did away with it. And when they did away, they made different gaskets, different valve body plate, everything's different up here to do away with the piston. 
See, it's a totally open hole. Well, there used to be a servo in there, or excuse me, an accumulator in there. See? And then they changed the valve body plate up too to do away with it too, so. They've changed this up through here too on uh, different designs. So, main thing on these units when you start changing parts or just like all of them, uh, you wanna be careful. This tranny's been very hot. Okay, there's, get in here. So this is your overdrive servo here. That applies your overdrive band. Uh, they make different variations of this. Uh, and it's all known by the number, the B here, the A, B, C, D like that. Very uh, difference in sizes of the piston. So you can get it out here and look at this here. Right here and see the number uh, makes a difference in how big this piston is. This is in B and A would be a bigger one. So anytime bigger, it gives it more fluid pressure to piss, push on the band. So, but I guess I believe this one just run out of fluid. Now you get over here, get into your reverse uh, servo cover. I get this out. Some of these are hard. I didn't say anything was easy. <laughs> now you have the ones, I promise. Main thing on these is they never change the size of the piston or anything. This is your reverse uh, servo. That applies your reverse band. Uh, main thing is make sure they're soft rubber. Uh, these get really hard and brittle. You can just take and break the tips off of them. Even on the cover, the cover's the same way. Make sure it's soft. These feel really soft and tender. So, but we lock. some pliers situated like being at the dentist now this uh, accumulator piston assembly right here is your third gear normally there's just one spring in here uh, this already has a shift kit in it it's actually got another spring inside of it uh, you stiffen this up and you have a firmer third gear uh, no trick is actually go find an aluminum one put about five pennies in here put the original spring back in you got the same thing works really good actually cost you a little money though five cents. five cents five cents man it works good value just went up yeah so you got to pull this pin right here take this assembly apart there's two seals in here there's one right here and there's an o-ring right in here now the kit comes with a new o-ring a square cut and a round o-ring the square cut i do not like they leak always put the round one back in it uh, we've had issues with the square cut one loosely, and uh, we just uh, quit using them. And it got so hot, it looks like you tried to blister the paint off the transmission. Yeah, it got, look at that, huh? Yeah. It did, huh? This thing got hot, hot, hot. Number one killer on the train is no oil. You run them on oil, they're gonna, they're gonna go out. And some people think a quart low isn't low. Yeah. These are actually measure by pints, they don't measure by quarts. There we go. So, um, if you're, you put a cord in it, you're four pints low.
Um. This is your intermediate uh, piston right here that applies your intermediate clutch right through here. See, it'll still feel pretty soft. Now, the thing too is with this thing here is see that little hole right there? Yep. That always needs to go towards the top of the pump. That way it lubricates all the top of the clutches and stuff like that. The oil runs down. If you put this down here on the bottom, it aerates the fluid going to the pan. I've just, we've just seen issues with it doing that. So this hole always goes towards the top. Okay. Hole to the top. look for wear across here to here that's just a little surface uh, surface staining there's no feeling it, it, it's nice it's good no, there's a spring and a check ball right here this is your cooler line flow there's a check valve way down in here that when we take this set on table and we blow air down through here and hold it off that spring better move if that spring don't move you don't have no cooler line flow so you better remember that that you can have a clean cooler in the in the truck, but if this spring don't if that valve don't move right here, it ain't gonna work. Let me show you if I can. People don't realize that. Trent, can you zoom in on that? Yep. You see that spring way mm -hmm. down in there? I'm gonna move it. Did you see that? Yep. Okay. If that don't happen, you better figure out why because you will not have no cooter line flow in this tranny will burn up. It'll melt the planetary gears to the, to the ground. So. Now what we got here first is gonna be our intermediate clutches, our second gear clutches. <laughs> dang dang sticky three intermediate now we, he said he lost overdrive which this is your AOD band now Ford, Ford built this band they were really excited about it building an overdrive band Toast. Okay. Now, when Ford built the AOD, this is the first uh, design of their overdrive, okay, of the, of the bigger version. So they had this little bitty overdrive band. So when they went to the AOD E, e they went to a bigger band. See, this is AOD E. It also fits the 4R70W and stuff like that. So you do have an upgrade. But the only problem is this band will not go back in this unit. You have to go back with this band. So the drum ain't big enough for it. The band will hang off. You did, you're, you're, you're pretty much stuck with this little cheap band. So, but they did upgrade on AODEs and the 470Ws to a lot bigger overdrive band. So, but you do have an option here of going to a bigger piston to apply this band. So we will upgrade that to a bigger piston. That way this band will survive a little bit longer. Uh, but nothing will survive with no fluid, so. Now this here is your reverse clutch. Um, now they did vary on uh, different, uh, they put three or four in here depending on motor size and stuff like that. So they did variate on that. Uh, they didn't change the groove, they changed the thickness of this. So if you had a thicker one here, you had less clutches. So you can actually upgrade it by just going with a thicker, a thinner top hat if you want to do that for the customer. This has got the most that's in it, that's that's always gonna get. So there's no way to upgrade that. But you can if you got this. 
one that isn't. So this is actually the forward clutch here. I expect this clutch to have some damage too, probably. A little bit of heat too from being run low on fluid. So this here's the clutch that comes off in overdrive. Uh, when you put in uh, drive to go forward, this clutch comes on, the vehicle moves forward. It stays on in second, uh, stays on in third. When it goes to fourth gear, this clutch comes off. So when you make a passing gear four, three downshift, your forward clutch has to come back on. The band releases, you're back in third gear. So. This is your sun gear cell, your lower planetary, and your uh, upper ring gear, or sun gear, I mean. Take this off here like this. Ford did redo this in the 470Ws and through the mid-year of the AODEs. So you can get in this area right here, when you start changing parts, you're gonna get in big trouble. So you gotta be really careful. You got this snapper, and it's got these two tails on it. Look where it's at. See, I have it. I have it in the bore right through here. I may do. I, I meant me. I'm so bad about building. Right. Uh. Did you shoot yourself? Well, now here's the, the Annie clock oh, frame yeah. or whatever. Oh, I got you. Uh, so this training That's here, kind of like the 460 E's and stuff like that. Uh, they changed them up in the AOD and the 470W. It doesn't even look like this no more. It's just a flat looking. I don't know what it is, but I guess it works. I mean, we put them back mm -hmm. in. Now, this is the lower planetary. Pretty amazing uh, piece here, really. This bushing, anytime you put this bushing in, you better stake it down. A lot of people try to push it flat. And next thing you know, you just, the bearing that sets in here has a shank on it that sets down in here. So if you put that bushing flush, it's gonna break that bearing when you bolt the pump down. Okay, so, and then you won't even know you've done it. Now you notice here, they have a snap ring down in here to support the band. So when you put that into the band, will lay on that right there. And this is the band I'm talking about. This band will sit down and lay on top of that snap ring. And that's all that is, is just a support. Now this tranny has been changed multiple times uh, from the bearings here instead of thrust washers. Uh, to the depth of this drum right here, they've changed. They made this uh, shorter. Uh, when they went to a bearing here, uh, they got rid of this washer. See? So, I mean, and what's crazy is this bearing and this bearing almost looks identical, but they will not interchange. So, you got to be careful there. You look here, he's got these three or four ceiling rings here on the back. Fluid actually goes through these for your governor and your third gear clutch apply. If you notice here, now if we had a 470W, this drum would just pull out the front. But then it's an AOD that goes out the back. Now this is your third gear clutch. It basically goes on there and there's them two seals and there's that feed hole. It goes in here like this. If you blew air through hole here, I'm not sure which one it is it would bring on this clutch right here. So, but let's get into the jet drive. What you got is, you got this shaft coming into this drum just inside. Uh, which will come in here and slide into this converter just like that. So now when this clutch comes on for third gear, you're automatically locked to the motor. So if the motor is missing bad or anything like that, you're gonna know when you went into third gear because you're gonna be locked straight to the motor. Uh, and same way with fourth gear, and that's how you have your lock up to get your fuel mileage and stuff like that. Uh, and the tranny stays cool. Now also here, they did change this drum a lot. 
Um, there's just this clutch is just so tiny for third gear. only five clutches in this pack right here the only way you can get more is you can buy an alto or something like that and get some uh, thinner clutches and thinner steels to put them in there or you can find your drum that this snap ring's been raised because they did make them this screw right here they took and raised it up to where you can put more clutches in here you didn't have to change the hub or anything the hub is still long enough for the more clutches Things well, torn up. Yeah, pretty torn up, but uh, we'll get it all cleaned up, uh, get it all back together for them, put a little shift kit or something in it, and make it shift nice, uh, make sure it doesn't leak for sure, and uh, get it back to him. <laughs> so, y'all have a good day.